Good morning. Uh, calling our city pre-commission meeting to order at 8 a.m. Hopefully everyone's had a good past, uh, I think it's been three weeks since we last uh, came together like this. So uh, looking at the agenda, is there anything on the well, Senate agenda's regular meeting minutes? Uh, everybody get with the meeting minutes, had a chance to review those. I was good with those, all right. Moving on to new business. Request for annexation on Cashamar Drive. Any questions about that? The property around it is Lynn Haven, right? Yes. Yeah. That's what I thought. Right. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, and of course, it'll be first reading my title only, so we won't be voting on that. Okay. Uh, we'll just be reading the ordinance, uh, city manager read it. And if there's any additional questions at that time, we can ask those. But um, we won't be voting on that, so there probably won't be any public comment on that. One. Uh, another first reading, um, and this is basically coordinated with that one. Uh, any questions on that one? It's basically the same thing, same same parcel. So uh, if I just ask Amanda a question, yes, yeah. do you have any concerns? Is all I am to answer. Um, I don't have any concerns. Um, you probably should be aware of um, the gentleman who owns the property to the east which is high density residential it's kind of to the yeah. east and north it wraps around it seems like he and this guy used to be friends and anyway um yeah so he came out to the planning commission meeting and he had a few questions because i'm not sure they're friends anymore um and he had a few questions but um the person who's wanting to annex it in has the um, answers. One of the questions that the guy had was why, you know, it was public institution. I must admit it was something I wondered. Uh, why was it public institutional? Because it seems strange that yeah. it would be public institutional. Um, and um, it used to be, that parcel used to be part of that bigger parcel that's now Cashelmara. All of that used to be one big parcel. Um, and it was all apparently public institutional because uh, it was, there was going to be a grassy pond school located there. Mm. But that never happened. Um, and when the other property was annexed in to the city, this portion wasn't, it wasn't all annexed in, so this portion wasn't, so it basically created an enclave. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And why, why are they mixed? Sorry, mixed use? Yeah. Uh, Cashelmara? Yeah. Um, I think, now this is just me because I was not here when it was annexed in. Um, I can't remember if the land use was changed. But anyway, mixed juice, there used to be, I don't know if you recall, but there used to be a uh, restaurant yep. there, yep. Um, House of Seafood. And uh, with that being there prior, okay. I think they weren't really sure. The people that were changing the land use weren't really sure um about what they you know and you shouldn't to be honest when you change language you should just be asking for like you know the statutes and the, and the state say you look at the surrounding areas you think about the various uses the various things you can do under that land use so i think they felt that mixed juice was the one that would give them either single family housing multi-family housing certain types of commercial i mean that's just more flexibility guess. more flexibility and also you know townhomes less uh, smaller side setbacks, that kind of thing. That, but that's just my guess. And then you've got high density residential there, yeah. which to me, I, I would have thought, like you guys would probably have said no to that. But who knows back in the day what happened there? Okay. Did you ask our historian, Bobby Baker? Uh, Bobby, well, Bobby's been like, Bobby's aware <laughs> of it all, aren't you, Bobby? He hasn't had any comments, have you, Bobby? No, I'm just kidding. Mr. Historian. Um, and there are, I will also, I will mention that there are, um, the gentleman said something about some headstones that are there. The owner said that they are memorial headstones. Oh. The, the person, he knows for a fact, one of the people who, whose headstone is there is buried up further north, not even in the city, like up towards Chickley Way, maybe Warsaw or somewhere. Um, so, um, you know, you can always ask him when we have a public hearing, because this first, as the mayor said, this is going to be first reading by title only. There isn't going to be a presentation, it's just first reading by title only. On the 23rd, there will be the public hearing. So, so no bodies in the ground. Well, as far as we know, he said that he had a sonograph thing done to see if there were any bodies um, and could not, and it showed that there weren't. We asked him if he could actually bring that into us, if he had any thought on that. 
Uh, we haven't received it as yet, but we only asked in a couple of days. But we thought it might help if there were any questions. Okay. Yeah, You're welcome. Thank you. Does anybody else miss that restaurant? I love that restaurant as a kid. Oh, before my time. Uh, okay. House of Seafood. <laughs> Great fried shrimp. I personally was like six years old, so I had a hamburger. But <laughs> thank you, Sam, for sharing that. <laughs> Making me feel so good. Uh, number 11, first reading by title only, amending article number six for the public meetings of chapter two of the city code of ordinances. Uh, anything you'd like to say on this? Anyway? I think y'all were expecting this ordinance. It simplifies your process and allows y'all to just adopt a resolution that sets those rules. So it deletes all of the existing rules from your right. I had a few people inquire about this, and this is the way I explained it to them, the way I understand it, understood it is. When we do the second reading, we'll, if we adopt this ordinance, we're going to be adopting the resolution at that same commission meeting. That is the Good. expectation, yes. So I explained that to them because I think a lot of people see all that stuff being deleted. And like, what are you doing? It's like, well, no, there's going to be a resolution that's going to adopt all that stuff. So yeah, I just want to make sure I understood that correctly. And the resolution will be coming out within the next week or so. Or okay. something you will be ready to discuss at the next meeting. So, Roger. Um, Number 12, quasi judicial public hearing. Uh, approval, possible approval for request for development order for 1609 Iowa Avenue, King Griffin Park, and City of Haven. So, of course, this is us approving the parking that we need um, over at King Griffin. Are there any questions about that? Does that require a retention pond, or is that what that is in the bottom left hand corner? There is something in the bottom for it. Is that that mm -hmm. green area? Okay. Yeah. We have to follow our own rules, you know. So yes, we do. Why yeah. not? Um, other, any other questions about that? That's interesting on the retention pond that it looks like it has a little arm going out. Can Just we try that to be was creative? interesting. I know one thing I'm excited for that parking if it passes because yeah. I was there this past weekend. It was hard to find a parking spot. It is very hard when you have over a thousand kids that are now playing in our league um, and we're back to where really beyond where we were uh, pre-hurricane um, we definitely need this this parking and they park across the street on the you know on the condo side yeah. and then the kids run across yeah. it's it's kind of scary it's very dangerous Number 13, uh, discussion for Chapter 10, Articles 1 and 2 of the City Codes. So we're going back to look at Articles 1 and 2 again. We talked about it a little bit uh, last meeting where we got some more feedback. Uh, we did get um, Sam's information. Uh, Commissioner Ward got his feedback on um, Articles 1 and 2. Are there any concerns in regards to the feedback or... Everybody good with updating you as we um, receive feedback. I have some. Okay, I, I agree with some of the, the terms need to be changed, dumb, foul, molest. But like on um, livestock list, you know, it says try to list all of the livestock. What if there's an exception or if, I mean, what if something comes from, I mean, we don't need to include et cetera in some of those uh, lists. Todd, Todd did have some feedback on that. Um, could you, he, he did come up and discuss that after last commission meeting with uh, Commissioner Peebles and myself oh, on okay. that particular matter. Yes, ma'am. I'm sh not sure if we try to list livestock that we will cover everything. Sure as we try, somebody will have an emu or mm -hmm. someone, you know, and we'll miss something. So I think what we need to probably focus on is uh, typical domesticated animals are our pets, basically. And anything beyond it that's not typical, we classify as livestock. And we give some examples. If that's what, if that's what you're asking. Yes. Okay. Yeah, can yeah. I do the opposite of what I have here? Well, since we're talking about... <laughs> livestock there's a section about and y'all suggested maybe uh doing acreage for livestock but consider the neighborhood you know do you want the neighbor if i was next door and i would smell 
you know, the... Mm -hmm. The water water buffalo? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I would, I'd be very upset. Mm -hmm. And I'd be upset at the commission for allowing that. So that's just my thoughts on that. Um, Necessary means, I agree. Um, Several of y'all discussed that. Is that a, a vague term? By any necessary means, that's given you some leeway. Do you do you want them to have that leeway? I, I I think you do want some flexibility because what's necessary in a certain situation may be different depending on okay the property, the animal, the circumstances. Okay, but we got a call, or I got a call a few weeks ago about picking up a a pig and a goat uh, over on New York, and so it's like. How do you pick up a pig and a goat? You know, and so we had so the neighbors had to corral it in somebody else's yard, and then the pig and the goat start tearing up that yard, oh, knocking right. over motorcycles and all that. Yeah. And, um, and so I called. They're like, "Yeah, they're coming to pick him up." And I think like they're like coming in a car or something. I'm like, you're not gonna pick up a pig and a goat in a car, right? So what's necessary in one situation may not be as necessary in another situation. So. Um, Pigs and goats are a little different than dogs. Well, and that's exactly the reason why we need to be careful about designating acreage within the city limits for animals. Yeah. Well, this this was on New York, so there was no acreage over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is right over by tax office, so there there was no acreage over there. Okay. Um. I I think if an animal has been designated as uh, dangerous, dangerous, they they shouldn't be allowed to sell or give the animal away. That's that's listed in one of these. Uh, that's a good mm-hmm. That um, you know, if they want to get rid of it, they need to bring it to the shelter and let the shelter handle. That way, you know that. The people that are getting it and have the truth right. instead of, you know, you can see somebody saying, oh, well, they were picking on me and yeah. know, my animal is really not that dangerous. And they get it for their kids and, mm-hmm. you know. That's a good point. Um, so, what you're saying, I guess, for clarity as we're updating it for the record is. If an animal has been deemed dangerous by the city, then the owners cannot, I guess, give it away to someone within the city. Uh, they would need to bring it to the, to the animal shelter and allow us to. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I want to check the statutes on that. That's not a bad remedy to only let that be the, to be the only option for an owner at that point if they want to get rid of the dog, barring moving out of the city themselves. Um, but I do want to check the statutes because there are a lot of statutes that say with, that govern dangerous dogs and what you can do and not do. So um, we'll just check that. Okay. To make sure we're we're not overreaching. Like I said, that's just kind of my personal opinion there. And, and we actually have to go through a magistrate hearing to deem a dog as dangerous. Yeah. And since I've been here four years now, we've only had one. And the magistrate ruled that the dog would not be ruled dangerous. Um, so... Okay, so it, there there is definitely a process to go through. I would say the only exception to that is like if they're going to give the dog to a certain society. I don't know if there's any around here that set up dangerous dogs or something like that. I don't know. Oh, man. Okay, that's that's. Yes, um, I agreed with most of okay. the suggestions. I guess good without, job. <laughs> right. Any Thanks. anything, Commissioner? Working in further explanation? Yeah, I think Ty answered one of my questions. I asked how many dangerous dogs do we have in Lynnhaven. It sounds like it's pretty rare. It is, and and once a dog is deemed dangerous, as as outlined in the ordinance, um, it has to be kept on property. It has to be muzzled in public. If it's outside, it has to be in a completely enclosed, including a roof if it's a kennel. Right. Um, so there's some pretty strict standards involved. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. And then the last thing when uh, for section 10-30 at the end of it, it says owner's request for, is that, is there a reason yeah. why it's left off like that? It's just like it's any request? Yeah. Yes. Like it was. The sentence is unfinished? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. 
And, and I might be by design that way. No. I just, no, okay. Now, you had, an, you had a question about insurance. Did that one get answered for you? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty rare, you know. I mean, so the other thing I asked, Ty, sorry, I just put, do we actually ensure the owner has obtained and renewed the, their insurance? So once they determine it's dangerous, they're supposed to get, I guess, extra insurance. And, and all to that. be honest with you, Commissioner, I'm not, I'm not yeah. familiar since we didn't have, have right. that. So it's um, pretty <laughs> rare. Yeah, and the actual, uh, the actual incident in question was a small dog had nipped two different people. Right. So whoever got nipped was pushing the issue. The owner of the dog brought in six or seven witnesses, including daycare, that said, yes, the dog nips, but it's not a vicious dog. And that's right. So we, we never even got to that point. I would imagine when that happens, there's paperwork that they got to sign that says you require to have insurance. And, so and I think it falls under a state statute, to be honest with you. If, yeah. if it's deemed dangerous dog, I think it's going to be wherever that dog travels throughout the state. Well, it, it'll still follow it. OK, thank you. Yes, sir. It says also on that very same one that you're questioning that you have to uh, post a bond with the clerk of Bay County. Oh yeah, and I'm that. not like I said, I haven't I haven't crossed that bridge yet. But it yeah. it is a very once the dog is deemed dangerous, it's cheaper just to put the dog down. Wow. Mm. Thanks. You have any comments on this for discussion, Mr. Yes. Yeah. Any All right, questions? I have one more. One more. Um, do they give <laughs> now? Oh, you're good. Okay. Do they um, give rabies shots only every twelve months? There's no shot like for two years, or because this specifically says a rabies shot every twelve months. Yeah, I think I think because I just took my dog to the yeah. I think it's a, a twelve month. Okay. It's like a once a year shot like you get the mm -hmm. i mean they're getting so advanced now i was wondering if now some of the i think some of the boarding sh some of the boarding stuff may be increased it used to be like every six months that might go for a year not like the board teller that might be for like a year for like mm -hmm. boarding and taking them to uh the groomer and things like that but for the rabies because you have to get a new tag every year for the rabies so i was just wondering because it was so specific you know 12 months i yeah. didn't know if there were shots that lasted more than 12 months they probably do i i just don't pay for it i just pay for the the, the 12 month one okay and you get them tag and so then when you get the dog you see the tag on the dog and all that stuff or cat and 10 1081 was a little confusing to me but it just could be me it's dogs in public places okay and also 1083 and 84 were kind of the same. So what was confusing about that? Mm -hmm. I'm just, just asking for clarity so we can um, try to clarify. Well, one sentence says no dogs in public places. And then the next sentence says, well, but it doesn't say specifically that they're special dogs. You yeah. know, that kind of thing. It goes mm -hmm. from no dogs to... Well, if you bring one, it's got to be on leash and stuff like that. I don't know. I just thought it was, if you're going to allow dogs in public places, they have to be on leashes. They, shouldn't they be like a service dog or something like that? Well, we're, but, most of our parks are pet friendly as long as they're on a leash no longer than six feet. But you're right. These are some of the issues that I think we need to bring clarity to. That, Like I said, we're either silent on something or contradictory somewhere else in the ordinance. And that's what we need to clean up. Okay. You said that's 81 and 83? Um, 81 is public places. Um, 83 and 84 are basically talking about the same thing, if I understood it correctly. Okay. Okay, that's it. You have any additional thoughts or comments on this thing? Uh, no, sir. So we'll um, see if we get any additional feedback from citizens about it. One citizen was very grateful when I did clarify with him about the uh, chickens and ducks and all of that. So I <laughs> immediately followed up with him to let him know that, you know, he was good to go. That we didn't have to change anything for him to, that he was falling within compliance if he, if he had ducks. So he was really grateful and happy about that. Even yeah, for the some people we, eat the duck eggs. Well, yeah. his, his daughter's allergic to chicken eggs, so okay. she has to. Yeah. That's why he was asking about the ducks, because she could eat the, the duck eggs. So 
Um, but he was very appreciative that we did take the time to even address or even, you know, bring it for discussion yeah. about that matter. So he really was thankful to the commission for that and appreciated it. Um, I believe we all received the email regarding uh, traffic um, concerns in Moorwood Highlands. Yeah. And so you also received a, a follow up from um, the city manager <clears throat> on the procedure for that. <clears throat> so I did meet with that committee yesterday. Um, so I did meet with the, I was looking up the official name for it. Since we're on record here, I want to make sure I get it right. Uh, the Traffic Calming Safety Committee. Um, and we talked about the traffic safety policy and procedures. So I did meet with the Traffic Safe Calming Safety Committee on yesterday. Um, because in talking to the citizens, I, I did say, hey, we, we might just put this on the agenda for further discussion. And then talk to the city manager and say, okay, well, let's talk about it at pre-commission. Let's hold off on putting it on the agenda for discussion. We can talk, discuss it at pre-commission. And so I did, I did meet with the committee yesterday and uh, talked about the procedures moving forward on, um, on what they would be doing. So city manager, if you give us a little more detail. Sure. So these procedures kind of already always been in place. I think they were implemented somewhere around 2017. And there is a um, procedural book that we follow. So when someone comes in and says, hey, some, we have a lot of speeding going in this area, we usually, um, we'll, the committee will get together and say, and they'll decide where that specific trip counter um, will go. It measures, you know, the, of course, the speed, how many cars, um, usually stays there for about a week so we can get some true data. Then once the data comes back, which is downloaded by Public Works, um, we look at the data, usually gives us an average speed, how many, pe uh, how many cars have gone through, um, the highest speed, the lowest speed. Uh, and then um, we determine between Public Works, Infrastructure Director, uh, Chief of Police, and myself that at this time there's not a not, nothing to support that it needs to have, that that particular area needs a stop sign or a speed bump or any of those things. We just need to patrol, uh, and so we will step up the patrol. Now there have been times in the past years that um, you know it's come back that. Yeah, we need to put a new another stop sign there. We uh, maybe put in a speed bump, um, but I always and we all caution citizens mm -hmm. that speed bumps that we put in are very loud, and um, they can be annoying to uh, some residents that are around in that area. That's one of the reasons in the procedure it says that you have to get at least 80% of the buy-in from that neighborhood, 80 or 90%, I can't remember, uh, from that, from that um, particular neighborhood. Because some people may not want them. It may just be a few. And so we don't want to put something down. And then uh, half of the community is saying we don't want them, and half is saying we, we, we want them. So we want to make sure that that's something they want. <laughs> but we can assess a lot of times and say there needs to be a stop sign there and put it there, and then try to alert the residents that it is in place. And so um, from that particular email, we've already started meeting with um, the mayor just so we could go through that process with him. Uh, there will be uh, a device that, uh, in Moet Highlands uh, beginning on Monday, and it is usually will stay there a week, and then uh, we will move it to the second location that seems to be a problem. Then we'll move it to the third location. But we are trying to uh, purchase an, another one so that uh, we can kind of gauge at the same at the same time. So um, we do do our due, due diligence before we make a recommendation uh, to uh, the commission. Because if there's a recommendation we make to you all, you will have to vote on it whether or not to put it there. Yeah. Okay. So just uh, if you know if you're communicating with those residents or citizens that have reached out um, based on what city manager and committee has described, because there's several streets uh, that have been identified, it's going to take at least about a month Correct. to gather the data um, before there can even be any assessment or recommendation. So. Um, so it'll be about a month, at least a month, before we're able to even convene back. The committee is able to convene back to say, okay, this is what the data says. This is what what's happening. So uh, it'll probably be over in May or June before something actually comes back right. as to, so to to what needs to happen there. So, uh, and in the meantime, Mayor, yeah. we will put patrol there yeah. 
to try to slow things down until that, that data comes back. Okay. I didn't know that the calendar also uh, interpreted speed. Yeah. If you'll see when it flashes up there, it'll tell you how fast you're going. Oh, oh, okay. I thought we were just talking about that cord that goes across the road. Oh, you're talking the thing with two yeah. wheels? The, the, the cord one does as well. It, it does the number of vehicles and it does the speed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take tag photos, does it? No, ma'am, no tag photos. <laughs> <laughs> um, she doesn't want to get in trouble for going too slow. She's not saying she's breaking the law. We don't know who the speeder is, just that they were speeding. Um, Speaking of of tag photos uh, one of the things i mentioned to city manager i was in a meeting uh last month and the uh because you know we're always trying to be like panama city because that's all the recommendations that are ever brought to me is what panama city does and so here's something else that panama city is doing that we can consider um they're actually putting in uh traffic cams in their uh school zones so they're, they're actually putting traffic cams in their school zones for ticketing so Instead of pulling you over, if you're speeding up through the school zone, they snap you, then they send you a ticket in the mail. Um, I forgot the exact calculations. I don't know if it was going to be like $90,000 a month or $90,000 a week or something like that. I forgot the number. You mean it'll cost the city? No, the people that are speeding through. Oh, that will generate funds Correct. for the city? Yeah, because they, they keep account of how many people actually speed through the school zone. Wow. Um, <laughs> and, so, uh, and so from my understanding, I guess it's supposed to be free equipment. Uh, so I told him I would, I mentioned to the city manager, and since we're going to be talking about traffic issues today, I thought I would bring it up. So we're aware of that program. There's a program for that. Okay. Lieutenant Blaylock, um, he was talking about it probably four or five months ago. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where we are on it, but okay. he's, he's aware and he has looked into it and I'll check, I'll check up on it too, but okay. we're aware that that exists and we were very interested in it. Great. Cause he, he, they mentioned it and I said, well, I'll mention it to us and see where we, where we are with it. Cause I think, you know, free sort of stood out a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's the best price when it's free 99. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you. Not that I would want to do it for revenue in that, but um, <laughs> but but from my understood, if you get ticketed, most of that money should go goes to the county and the state, doesn't it? That's the way I understood it. So if you if you ever looked in a Florida statute book, there's a whole section that tells where all the money goes for a traffic citation. I got the fee schedule and everything. And what the city of Lynn Haven gets is a very very minuscule amount. Yeah. So. On a hundred and fifty five dollar ticket, I mean I don't I'm not gonna quote a specific amount Maybe but a couple bucks. Yeah, it's probably gonna be under twenty dollars the city actually gets. Yeah. But it, it breaks it all down because there's a lot of hands in that pot. Right. Oh I know. <laughs> I've I've actually gotten with the county accountant, they showed like how much in fines you guys generated from all the tickets and everything and we get about it's less than eight percent of all the fees. Yeah, it's normally. it's pretty small. It is. So is that an issue, the speeding in the school zones during those specific times? There, we're having an issue right now around Mowat because 390. So 390, with it got widened. The speed limit's bumped up to 45. So we're having a little bit of an issue there. So we used to have an officer sit on Mowat School Road. We moved that officer to the median on 390, trying to slow people down on 390. Mm -hmm. Because the, the speed isn't an issue on Mowat School Road. It's just congestion. Yeah. And it, we're, you know, being we're trying to be visible on Mowat School Road so people know to slow down, watch out because kids run across the road. So we're more concentrating over on 390 now because because of that speed limit increase. But yeah, there there is an issue there, and we're trying to handle it. It's hard to actually get out and enforce traffic because of the speed and what's going on there. But um, we're just sitting in the meeting with the blue lights on, and that's being pretty effective. We're not necessarily writing tickets because it's actually kind of dangerous to get out there in traffic right there at that spot but mm -hmm. that's something that we are we're dealing with right now is it mainly in the afternoon yeah it, it's in the mornings too but i would say the afternoon is probably a little bit worse all right so uh let's see this is like the mode high what highland residents know and i'll i did tell them we'll be discussing the pre-commission and encourage them to listen to the youtube or, or listen to pre-commission so they could hear um, directly what we were saying about it. Um, 
And then also, uh, city manager has another update yes. for us as well. And just so you know, I did um, send an email this morning to one of the residents telling her that we would start to put those devices there come Monday. So she may spread that word. It's kind of hard to, you almost don't want to tell them because then you can get a true reading, but hopefully it'll give us some information back from it. Yes. And so after uh, yesterday, and in, in uh, reference to Chief R Ricky Ramey's case, that has been extended to June 6th. And as you remember, um, Attorney Marcy came in and said, you know, if things change, then of course we would have to further take action and change our course as well. And so the hearing has been moved, I think, about four times. This last time is June 6th. That's a very long time. And it was my decision to go on and move Mr. Ramey uh, to uh, administrative duties. And his administrative duties will be just what it says, administrative duties. Um, he turned in uh, his firearm, his badge, uh, to assistant chief um, in finger. Um, and surely he has a lot of knowledge and we're, you know, we're getting ready for this uh, accreditation, re-up of this accreditation. So surely we need his uh, expertise and knowledge there um, until such time uh, things change on June 6th. All right, any questions for the city manager? So was that done based on recommendation from the hr attorney or you just took it upon yourself to do that i'd already started that process and i just made sure it was all right with the hr attorney it was in full agreement with that and uh, and he actually said it here um in terms of if something changed within the next three weeks mm -hmm. then we would take action so um that, that was the reason why as, as well and that was basically what our motion was when we voted was to allow basically allow the, the case to try to come up so we can see what happens with the case or moving forward to make a decision however when we came to our next commission meeting if something did not happen with the case and we we'll reevaluate to see you know how do we move forward from there so um allowed us to give you know, the process for due diligence but also um moving forward in the best interest of the city and the citizens so and guys i am we are uh, close watching of this and our, our fingers surely on the pulse and so just allow me and staff to do what we know to be right uh, to keep things in compliance and um, to make sure we are protecting the city as well as the rights of the individual okay. any additional questions anything else uh, needed for discussion before we adjourn I don't know. Did y'all get the email about renaming the city, uh, the streets? I, I did see something. I did see that. I was trying to figure out who that email was from. I couldn't yeah. figure that either. Um, I wasn't sure if it was actually from the founder of Lynn Haven or if it was. I, I looked up the email address on Google. I didn't get any results. Got it. it just, I don't know. The whole thing just looked suspicious to me because um, there's no contact information. There's no name, none of that. And. I don't know. It just looks suspicious to me. Yeah. But uh, I did see it, and I have had um, not many citizens, maybe two or three, ask similar questions when you know naming the streets or yeah. how did we come up with the names of the streets? Weren't they like north and south? You know, like yeah. you know. So there, there are always questions about the the state streets, like um, Carolina. Yeah, not North Carolina, South Carolina, just Carolina. Yeah. So we covered both of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, um, because Southerners say, oh, the Carolinas. Before we finish with this yeah. You're not made, Southern, are you? It made my You're life off. easier. I grew up on that street, so I didn't have to remind people if it was north or south. So I was happy that it's just Carolina. <laughs> so in your mind, it's just one state, Carolina? In my mind, it meant that I didn't have to explain people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to do it. <laughs> 
city manager. Yes, just to remind you that to, um, tonight is spring concert series. Anthony Peebles will be there. And then tomorrow is international food truck. I think we've had over a thousand people say yes, we will be there probably <clears throat> more than that. Mm -hmm. I have some entertainment going on from two to seven. Surely invite you to come out and be a part of the international food truck. We're also going to be having a tournament over at the sports um, complex. Um, and uh, so lots of stuff going on t tomorrow and tonight. What kind of tournament at the sports complex, Justin? So far. What kind of tournament? Uh, we have basketball, youth basketball, and then adult softball. Yes. So there's lots of stuff to do and watch. Mm -hmm. So when do the food trucks arrive? Uh, it is from 2 to 7. So the food trucks usually will arrive early to set up because we have them strategically placed in areas. We have over 25 food trucks. And this oh. is the first year we've done this. We think it will be great for our residents to come out and enjoy the day. You can have your own lunch and dinner right there. That sounds great. Uh, I'll mention this again on Tuesday. Congratulations to our uh, North Bay Haven girls softball. Yes. They won the county championship Absolutely. last night. Um, it was a great game. I got a chance to get there the, the last few innings, so they went into uh, extra innings. And so uh, it was, you know, they beat Crosstown Rival on a high school. So great game over at Mosley. So uh, so congratulations. Uh, congratulations to them. Hopefully they get into the postseason and have a, have a great run for us um, in Lynn Haven. All right. Anything else before we go? If not, meeting adjourned.